Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. Let's take a moment to see how easy it is to find our photographs using filters in Lightroom Classic. Now we see the filter bar at the top of the grid area. If I were to double click to go to loop view, you'll notice that we no longer have that filter option. So I'll tap the G key in order to return to grid. If the filter bar is ever missing, you can use the view menu and select show filter bar or use the backslash key to show and hide it. We'll want to click on the folder that we want to search in. In this case, I'll select 2023, or we could select all of our photographs if we wanted to search our entire library. I'll start by clicking on the text filter, or we could use Command F on Mac or Control F on Windows. So let's start typing in bear, because bear was a keyword that I added when I was importing some of my images. We can see the search results below. So these are all of the images that have the text bear in any of the searchable fields. We can also notice above the film strip that Lightroom Classic gives us a photo count. Now we can narrow this down by changing the first option to a different search criteria. If I choose file name, then it's not gonna find any images because I haven't renamed my files to include the word bear. But if I choose keywords, we can see the images again. Now, if I wanted to see all of the images that did not have the keyword bear, well, then I would switch the second column to doesn't contain. All right, let's set both of these back to their default and I'll remove the filter by clicking on the X icon. We can also filter on several different attributes. Here we can filter on flag status or whether or not an image has been exported. If an image has been edited, or if it has any star ratings applied. We can also choose between viewing images whose rating is greater than or equal to, rating is less than or equal to, or rating is equal to. We can also filter by color labels as well as kind of document, including original photo, virtual copy, or video. We can also combine different attributes. So we could filter on two stars and then add the red color label or I can combine the two star attribute with text. I'll type in bear again, and now we see all of the images that have the keyword bear and are two stars or greater. All right, let's disable the two star as well as the text attribute and move over to the metadata option. So searching by metadata is really powerful. We can see, for example, the first column here is set to date. So if I wanted to look at all of the images that I photographed on a single day, I just need to click on that day. If I wanted to narrow down my search to only view the images that were taken with a specific camera, then I can add that filter criteria. All right, let's view all of the days again. And maybe this time I wanna take a look at a specific camera and lens combination. We can use the drop down menu in order to choose from a variety of additional options. Here I'll select ISO speed, scroll down, and to select a range, I can click on one, hold down the shift key, and then select multiple attributes in a column. All right, let's set this back to all three cameras and take a look at another option. Here, instead of ISO speed, I'll change it to copyright status. This would be a great way to check and see if I'd neglected to apply my copyright and contact information on import. If we want to add or subtract columns, we can use the drop down menu on the right side of a column and either add a column to the left or right or remove a column. Let's set this back up so that I'm filtering by a specific camera as well as a specific ISO speed. Now, if you filter on the same criteria often, you'll want to save a preset. I'll click Custom Filter, and then choose to save the current settings as a new preset. I'll call this JK5DS and High ISO. Once I've created this, I can return to this filter at any time by selecting it from the list. We can see I have some additional filters. Here's one that will filter on my two star or greater videos. And here's another one for copyright status and another one for just the Photoshop files. All right, if I want to toggle off this filter, I can choose none. And to quickly toggle it back on, I can use Command L to toggle on the last used filter 
and Command L again in order to hide it. Now you may have noticed you can also filter by many different attributes using the filter option above the film strip. The reason that these options are offered in two different locations is because the filter option above the film strip is also available in the other modules. If I click on the develop module, we can see that it stays persistent. So I wouldn't need to return to the grid view if I just wanted to filter, say, on my flagged images. Or we can select from our different presets. All right, let's select two star and return to the library module. Now, if I want this filter to remain persistent when I move from one folder to another, I can click on the lock icon. And now as I select a different folder, we can see that I'm only going to view the two star images. All right, let's go ahead and unlock that filter and then choose none. And I think you can see that using filters in Lightroom Classic is a powerful way to quickly find your photos. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.